about um, kind of some calls to action. So feel free to just absorb what you can tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so my name is Kate. Um, I'm the membership experience manager. I do not have a CS background and I am learning a little bit about CS, but my background's in association management. Um, prior to this, I was at the Red Cross and Rotary International. And basically what my job is to make sure that you're getting the most out of your membership, you feel connected to this community, you're getting benefits that are valuable and you feel supported. So if I'm not doing that, let me know what I can do better. Um, usually uh, Jason is on the call. He's our amazing chapter relations manager. Um, he is fantastic. He was a CS uh, teacher for about 10 years. And then prior to that, he was an English teacher and um, he was in the army as well. So um, he just got his second vaccine. So he was like, I can't come tonight. Um, so I was like, you know what? we got this. So usually he'll be dropping in links, but like I said, next week, I'll go ahead and um, send all that follow-up information. Awesome. So for tonight, just to kind of manage expectations is I'm going to go through a lot of information, but again, I'll follow up with, um, you know, some links, calls to action, but the main takeaway is to think about what do you want to get out of your membership and what are your needs right now? So tonight we're just going to talk about some benefits. Um, I'm a very visual person, so I'm going to be showing how to navigate the website, how to look at some benefits, how to log in, um, kind of what to expect. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about chapters. I won't do the best job as compared to Jason, but I'll I'll let you know what it's about. Um, and then some next takeaway steps about what to expect with your membership. Um, if you guys have questions along the way, or if you all have questions along the way, feel free to drop it in the chat and either it will be answered or I'll go ahead and make sure I follow up at the end. Okay, great. Awesome. So uh, to give a little bit of context about CSTA, uh, stands for the computer science, or oh my gosh, it's been a long day. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's the Computer Science Teachers Association. So we actually came out of um, ACM uh, in the early 2000s as a special interest group. Uh, so we have been around for about 20 years, really. Uh, we've kind of um, revised a lot in the past couple of years. And what's kind of special about CSTA is one, we have a free membership, which is like pretty unheard of. And then we have a paid membership. So we want to make it accessible to all because we know we know that teachers don't get paid enough. Um, so a little bit more context about CSTA is we're very focused within addressing the inequity within computer science. Um, it's uh, kind of within our values, every, every bit of our programs and our committees we're focusing on, on how are we addressing inequity. Um, a little bit about mission and values is half of our staff is our prior CS teachers or have an education background. Um, I don't have a CS background, but association management and um, I did teach in Chicago for a few years, but kind of moving forward is what to expect is it's a place that's very value driven. So we really want to be driven by what's best for our teachers, right? What do they need right now? what is a, a gap that we can help fulfill and um, you know how are we improving right how are we receiving feedback how can we become better at what we do um, and it's also a place for people to to grow so we're offering opportunities for professional development and i'll kind of talk about some of what those things look like tonight awesome so uh this is one of those points where i'll talk a little bit and then i'll show things on my screen um, so I think first of all is if you haven't had the chance is um, something that you get with your membership paid or unpaid is you get an online portal. And I think right now something to kind of think about is, you know, we have a lot of logins to all sorts of different accounts is CSTA has an account that helps tie you to professional development, as well as some launching resources like a discussion board. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show our website and kind of talk about you know, where it is, what to get from it, and kind of where to go from there. So if I'm going too fast, someone please call me out or put it in the chat. Uh, again, I usually have some another colleague on the call. So right now, I'm at csteachers.org, and I just kind of wanted to get everyone oriented with the website because each system's different. So 
our website, I think, first of all, has a lot of resources that are external and internal. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of member login just to show you what that looks like. So it's up here in the upper right hand corner. You click member login and then you can always save um, your information here. So if you're a new member and you did the member login, you know, you created a membership is if you ever forget what that password is, which I do all the time, is you can click forgot login and look up that by your email or your username. Um, and I'll show you uh, kind of the next step here. So I'm going to click keep me logged in. And so for folks joining us, I'm just showing how to log in and some information about this process. Awesome. So let's kind of absorb what this page is. Um, the functionality of this is an online portal to get to resources, but it's also uh, almost like an online business card. So right now, a couple different things is you see this dashboard with a couple moving parts. I would say if you haven't logged in before, the main call to action is to kind of look at it, right? But to go ahead and edit your profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's underneath um, member dashboard, the right hand side. And so you'll see a lot of information on here. But the main thing is just to make sure that your login information feels good. So an email you use, um, if you want to change your password. And then um, kind of moving forward, if you're a plus member, if you purchase anything, it's under transaction history. All right, so I'm going to go ahead if I'm going too fast. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click go back. It's up in the upper left-hand corner. So I will say uh, best practice is to go make sure everything looks good and update a profile picture. All right, so on your member dashboard, there's a couple of different things to look out for. Um, first of all, we advertise information here, but we also have some cool benefits that are inside, uh, inside login only. So kind of access to AWS credits, um, looking at CST plus, uh, member benefits. I'll talk about the difference of that in a few minutes. Um, but main thing is you're able to kind of access, you know, joining a chapter, which we'll talk about later today, um, registering for events. So events are member only, and you register for them by using your, your login information. And we'll talk about that. Awesome. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick preview of looking at what the member login is. And I'll share an exciting update later about why this is kind of important. Well, all right, so let's make sure we're on track here. So I shared kind of what to expect with your membership um, and we'll get back to the presentation. Like I said, I'll flip back and forth because I think it's important to learn how to actually get to things. I read something and I'd rather just look at it. Awesome, so you, with your membership, you get an online pro portal, but you also get opportunities to kind of um, get latest industry news, engagement and networking opportunities. Um, we have a really great team that helps support programs and chapters, um, as well as it's just a really great place and environment. Um, we're an international association and uh, it's actually the smaller community than you think. So you've probably worked with folks before, or you might meet someone in the district over who's also a CSTA member. Awesome. So here I'm just going to highlight some of the things you're going to get. Um, in terms of resources, we send out um, information based on uh, kind of, you know, time of time of the month or depending on what you're looking for. So a CS Today, uh, it's a weekly newsletter that comes out every Thursday and it's regionalized depending on where you are. Um, you can always unsubscribe for this, but this is a heads up what that looks like. The Voice goes out to all members. It's a publication that goes out, um, it's the first Saturday of every month. So you might get your first one, uh, let's see, I think May 1st is, I mean, what is time? Yeah, you might get your first one this Saturday. Um, this is really great because it breaks down some of information about programming events going on, any scholarships, um, upcoming events, maybe a, an interview that we did. Uh, yeah, so look out for that. Um, and then I've highlighted a few other publications, but I would say if you're looking for information on CS Today, we're either going to email you about it or check out our Twitter. That's, uh, you know, just kind of um, some, some highlights there. Awesome. So I've already highlighted, you know, using um, your kind of online portal, but I'm going to go ahead and shift over to our events calendar. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and um, show you two different ways to get to this. One, if you just saw, um, is I was on the member dashboard and on the quick links, I clicked events calendar. So you can see up here at the top, I'm already logged in. 
All right, let me see if I'm going too fast. Do I receive CSTV via email? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay, great. So I got to this page by my member login, but you can also go under, um, if you go to csteachers.org, underneath events, click events calendar. Now there's a couple different ways to see this information. I find the calendar the easiest way versus a grid or a list. Um, and so what's on this calendar is any national events at CSTA and any chapter events. You're not going to see any sponsored vendor events in here, right? We're just keeping it to CSTA um, and in that alignment. So let's say today is what's today? Uh, today is the 27th. So you can see on here is we have the new member orientation and the greater Boston area is having um, you know, some kind of meeting. And so depending on if you're logged in or not, there's going to be different prompts, but um, you can see there's a lot of things going on. And something I'll say is, as you're thinking about your membership is, um, you know, if you want to join a meeting or, you know, hey, I'm free in a couple weeks is there's most likely something going on and you're more than welcome to go to a chapter meeting that's in Sacramento if you live in Florida there is no reason that you can't join those and kind of you know be a fly on the wall and learn about what's going on so i'm just going to go ahead and click on maybe something coming up a csta uh, miami meetup and so you'll see from here is you know it's going to ask me hey i want to register for this event it's just going to ask you for your login information um and that's the same as your your um your online portal awesome so Things I'm going to call out is we'll let you know about, um, you know, professional learning series, but if you're not part of a chapter, we're not going to email you different chapter meetups. So I would say as a new member, best practice is to check out the calendar and figure out what am I looking for, right? Am I looking for just going to a meetup? Is there a workshop that's going on that sounds interesting? And read a little bit more about it and who's hosting it. Um, so, for example, let's see, uh, like we had a lot of coded bias uh, screenings and discussions by different chapter groups. You're more than welcome to go to those and we have additional resources to support. Awesome. So I kind of highlighted um, kind of using the calendar, um, what to look for. Um, the other thing I want to call out is, all right, so we're back on this page here. Is you can see I'm logged in. Is there's a lot of resources that you can get to on here. Um, at any point, if you need to kind of reach out to us, is there is a contact form um, on the bottom of the page, and I'll share some emails at the end of this orientation. Um, so things I want to call out is um, we'll talk about chapter membership. Is for CSTA stand for for standards. Is it's underneath the standard tabs, and it's not just the standards it's standard resources it's things that you can help implement it's um you know all sorts of different things that might be in alignment of your classroom or what you're looking for underneath resources this is a really great tab um, all of this is free um there's a virtual teaching resource page which you know, hopefully we'll start to transition out of this in the next year but um this is you know continuously updated with either free or um, you know, very low cost resources that you can use for virtual teaching. Um, the CSTA voice, that's that publication I called out. It's just copies of that. CSTA, CS Today, these are copies of what's been sent out. Um, CS for Good and uh, CS for Social Justice, these were CS Education Week um, kind of initiatives. And so you can click on these at any point to get resources. Um, and I'll call out a few other things, but we also have programs that I'll talk about later. So, all right, <laughs> doing my best. All right, so let's get back. I always want to show how to navigate things. All right, so we talked about kind of navigating things, our online portal. Awesome. Here is the difference between membership types. And I think, um, again, this is, you should be leading by what you're looking for. So if you join because you're looking for a community, or professional development is, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to get that at CSTA. So I'm showcasing, um, you know, kind of this matrix, which is hopefully easier to use. But I think the call outs are is if you know, I want professional development, I want to go to conference, um, you know, there's PD I'm interested in, 
is most likely it's cheaper to do a CSTA Plus membership. So if you look up here at the top, you can see CSTA Basic. Um, you're going to get information about PD. You're going to be able to access that portal. You know, you'll be able to apply for scholarships. And then the plus is you just get access to a lot more. Um, we have it priced at $50 annual because that supports a lot of our programs. Um, but we, we really, we haven't raised it in a few years. And um, my job isn't to try and sell you your membership. It's to figure out what's the best for you, right? And so something I wanted to call out is, you know, we're talking about membership is that matrix is underneath the join CSTA tab here on our website is I just wanted to showcase um, there's a tab under CSTA plus benefits. So this is a membership type and um, beyond getting some like discounts is this is the PD I'm talking about. Um, and so we'll talk about some examples that might be worthwhile, or, or if you're looking for PD to digest in your own time, that might be here in this alignment. Um, so we'll talk through this as a couple different examples, but this is always a page that you can see as a free member, or even if you're not logged in to see, hey, what's out there? Um, you know, I'm looking for a course for, um, you know, the praxis exam, and I know it's this much, it's at CSTA, it's, you know, $200 cheaper. So, all right, let's see where we're at. So um, you might be a basic or plus, but again, uh, there's different, you know, kind of pros and cons to both. Or not, con I mean, there's no cons. <laughs> awesome, okay, so I'm gonna go through actually one benefit, um, and then I showed some basic benefits as well. All right, great. And thanks for your patience. I, I usually have someone else helping, so. Uh, <laughs> One one lady show. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and log out of my basic membership here and go ahead and go back to, to the benefit page. And I'm checking. I'm doing great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, so I'm on the benefits page here. So I help manage this and it's going to be compiled of, you know, different um, member benefits around PD videos of you know different summits and conferences we've done and so to find out more information um you know you need to become a member of you know to be a plus member so i'm going to go ahead and log in and so what happens if i try and log in from that benefit page is it should reroute me directly to that page so this is a good this is a good test. Yes, excellent. Okay. All right. So what's really nice about some of these benefits is um, they're aligned with most likely what you're looking for. So you've probably heard now that we're having our conference in July. And so what I wanted to show you is an example of how we kind of store, you know, event videos and sessions and resources from events. Okay. So you can see I'm logged in here at the top. And so this is from last year's conference, which was very much focused on kind of, you know, looking at that inequity in CS, talking about, you know, how to be anti-racist teacher and really focusing in on over 150 sessions based on PD, virtual teaching, um, and, you know, what your professional development looks like. Um, so this is just a taste of a benefit. We have this really great filter here. So I'm going to show you how this works is you can actually filter by grade band, different CS words, um, you know, pedagogy, resources, time slot. Easiest thing for me to do is maybe call out a nine through 12 um, resource. And so you can see there's, you know, 128 that are aligned with nine through 12. That doesn't mean that le or less than that is for other grade bands. So you can see if I do maybe updates of the joy of um, the beauty and joy of computing, the AP CSP course is we're going to have the recording, we're going to have the slides, and then some. you can watch it right on here. And it also gives information on the presenters if you want to look them up or contact them. So this is an example of a benefit um, that's really great. Now it's just, you know, kind of allocating the time to watch them. Uh, we do recommend certain videos, um, you know, within automations or say, hey, this is a really great one. But the other benefits that I kind of want to show you is you have access to Pluralsight One, which is, um, you know, free video channels based on the CS Praxis exam. Um, so you can filter at the top based on books, certification, professional development, 
a lot of these are videos, but a lot of them are classroom resources that are at a discount. Um, I do like to highlight that PLUS members get, you know, $200 towards AWS credit. And, um, you know, if you have questions about that, I'm happy to, to answer. I'm not an expert. But um, other really great ones are, um, we have our virtual teaching summit uh, kind of videos, as well as Nearpod and Pear Deck. I think you get three or four months for free and it's the extended version. So most likely this might be things that you're already looking for. I will ca call out um, fidgets. You get like a free um, sensor, which is really cool to kind of play around with. Um, and then moving forward, we're always adding to this and I'm actually working on a few more for um, book resources, textbook resources to add to this. So spent a little more time on that, but it's um, pretty exciting what we, we offer. Other things to call out for, you know, basic membership is you get, you know, everything that we provide in, you know, resources, but you're able to kind of use our job board, which we'll talk about later. Um, you get the $100 in AWS credit. Um, you're able to attend any conferences or summits and um, kind of our virtual PD. Awesome. All right. So let's get back on track. Let's see where we're at. Great. Uh, so this is where Jason kind of comes in, but um, to kind of give you an overview around chapters is the way that CSTA sets up chapters is much different than other organizations is you don't have to pay an additional amount to be part of a chapter. Um, really the primary focus of the chapters is to be uh, kind of the department meeting that you're not having. And so what I can say around chapters is you don't have to attend X amount of chapter meetings per month is it's a flexible space where the meetings are usually focused around workshops of PD um, or you're doing some kind of event. Um, what I will say is when you join a meeting, most likely you're going to get two or three resources that you can apply in the next couple weeks, um, either you know in or out of the classroom, which is really cool. So uh, we have over 90 chapters um, and some international. So I'm back on our page here and I'm going to click um, chapters, find your chapter. And most of them are doing obviously virtual events. Um, some have events like every week, some have a monthly. And so I wanted to show this page because you can either find a chapter if you're logged in, or if you're not logged in, you can come to this page and it's gonna say, join this chapter and prompt you to log in. Um, so we have chapters all over. Um, I will say the only states we don't have a chapter within the United States are Montana and I think South Dakota, I want to say. <laughs> so if you're from those places, we'd love to start one. Um, I'll just go ahead and put in um, California and show you what comes up. Uh, we have the most chapters here, which is I think uh, nine or 10. Yeah, so depending on where you are, um, you could join all of these chapters. And since we're virtual, um, you could pick and choose, you know, hey, I like how this chapter is putting on events or they do better workshops or, um, you know, they're closest to me. And when things reopen, I might want to, you know, participate in person. Um, I'll just call out that uh, we have a few new ones. We have one in the Philippines and actually Nigeria, and we are growing internationally, which is exciting. Um, so you just put in your state abbreviations and pull it up and it's going to say if you're logged in, view more or uh, log in to kind of learn more information. Awesome. Okay. Do, do, do. So I kind of showcased a little bit about how to get to your chapters. Um, and here you go. You, you can also start a chapter if you're interested. I'll send some follow up information about that. But uh, the main thing that I wanted to get across is um, there's flexibility in it. And uh, you amazing chapter leaders that, you know, are CS teachers, they're educators, they're, you know, working in district offices that are invested in putting in PD and helping people near you. And it's, it's really awesome. Great. Uh, and again, call out if you have any questions in the chat. Awesome. So I'm just going to keep plugging and uh, get us in within time. So next thing to think about is I asked at the beginning of this orientation to think about what do you want to get out of your membership? And the nice thing about CSTA is um, we've been around for 20 years. So we have long-term volunteers and members and we have folks that are, are fairly new. And so there's different ways to engage, but at the end of the day, you're engaging and helping with other teachers. 
Um, so the nice thing is you're always supporting other teachers, no matter what engagement or volunteer program there is. Uh, so if you're interested, we do have all sorts of volunteer roles available. So if you want to serve on a committee, um, you know, if you're interested in being a reviewer for a award, um, or even interested in our equity fellowship, I'll talk about that is we always need more people and um, it could be you. <laughs> awesome. So first thing I'm going to talk about is our computer science honor society. So I helped manage this program. We took it over from Code VA a couple years ago. And the main premise of this is, uh, you know, a society to help support the excellence of, you know, students, as well as kind of moving forward with giving CS that platform it needs. Um, and I'll check questions as I can. Uh, awesome. So I think the other thing to think about with the Honor Society is we do ask you become a uh, plus member to kind of lead it, but usually it's, you know, a CS teacher within a high school. And the main focus is, you know, CS excellence and the kind of call to action is to do service. And so this is obviously a picture pre COVID. But we have grants and scholarships available for this program um, from Google and other sponsors. And so most of the time, honor societies will put on an event during CS Ed Week. And so this year we saw hackathons, um, Hour of Code, and CSTA will give you funding to put on these events and kind of help support students. And we have over 200 societies right now. And uh, it's just really cool to see that growth. Um, the other piece to think about is what makes us different than other honor societies is we're very intentional about asking advisors to do equitable recruitment and that that GPA is actually a little bit lower and we ask that you take a you know CS course the student but um, it's about you know your interest in CS and being equitable and working within your school district in your school to make sure that you're reaching out to students that probably aren't being reached out to. So I'm happy to ask or answer any questions about this at the end, but it's a really great program and fairly new. Also, I have in here awards. So we have awards for students as well as um, teachers. And so we have a Teaching Excellence Award in which we have um, stipends available. So you'll find out information. We'll email you about, hey, this is coming up, apply for it. And it's an opportunity to get recognition for yourself as well as to kind of, um, you know, learn more about how to be an equitable, uh, you know, teacher because you can be involved in different um, aspects of a reviewer or, um, you know, come to our, our virtual summits and seminars about, you know, improving your teaching practice. All right, so we'll just keep going. Um, I mentioned committees. I would say, you know, figure out what feels good for you. This might be something that's down the line. Great. Conference uh, is coming up uh, in July. I will say it's it's amazing opportunity. I think a lot of folks are getting zoomed out, shall we say? Um, but what's really great is we had our first virtual conference last year, and we had three thousand participants. And so it's a little more accessible because you don't have to fly anywhere. But also, it's you know two full days of PD, so you can attend a session, um, you know, take a break and come back to a session. My favorite aspect of it is you know we have a great program uh, as well as you get a swag box so you can register um, you'll get something in the mail that kind of accompanies the conference that's pretty cool awesome and I highlighted this you know some of our resources from last year's conference great okay so uh, I should be still staring my screen the last one of the last things I wanted to show you is we have a job board so I'm going to go ahead and show that now so this is a way that we're helping um, kind of teachers look for PD. Um, so we email about this feature. Um, but if you want to look for jobs, job seekers can click here, um, sign up for job alerts. Um, or if you have a district that wants to post a job, it goes out to all our members. But you can see this is an opportunity to kind of, um, you know, check it throughout the school year, depending on if you're looking to make moves. I have seen some uh, virtual teaching on here, which is really cool, and lots of our sponsors that are interested in kind of taking on former CS teachers. So I wanted to call that out. Awesome. All right. So we're doing great. I'm hoping to end a little bit early. Okay. All right. The next thing I wanted to call out is that we have, you know, I showed you that online portal in the beginning, is we're launching a discussion board in the next month. 
So what there's a lot of discussion boards out there, but what I wanted to point out is this is a resource to either connect you with what you need or connect you with community. So we're gonna have grade band discussion groups. We're gonna have it by different programs, um, by different chapters. And so it's just another resource to find what you're looking for or if you're having a common challenge. Um, I will say it's gonna be really exciting. So as soon as we have that launched, um, you'll get information on it. But how to prepare is just make sure you have a profile picture and you have information updated on your profile. Okay, awesome. Um, so this is just an example. I wanted to call this out of like the types of uh, events we have. So we had an equity in action summit um, in March. So we have summits planned throughout the year and that will continue um, in a virtual setting in which usually it's you know pretty low cost and it has a significant discount for plus members. And these usually have around four, 500, 600 um, attendees. It's usually on a Saturday and it's usually a half day of PD in which you're gonna listen to different speakers, have different sessions, um, and have some breakout groups. Um, so this is our last summit and kind of the uh, action plan from, or the call to action was to create an equity action plan for your school district. And um, so if you're interested more about summits, I'll you know email next week, but this is a kind of a taste of, if this is something that interests you, we, we have it going on. Awesome, all right. So I'm gonna take a breather and just kind of show you some next steps. And then I wanna pause and take any questions since I went through a lot of things is some takeaway and next steps is, you know, check out your profile um, and make sure everything's updated. And then looking here is if you need any type of support with your membership, shoot me an email at membership at teachers at csteachers.org. If you have questions around chapter membership, um, chapters at csteachers.org is your place to go. I mentioned volunteering for different things. Um, I'll send you the direct link for that. And then um, best call out is for resources. Uh, make sure you're looking under our quality professional development page and our standards. Okay, Whew. all right, so thanks so much.